Welcome. Come on in to today's word of encouragement. For those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Imelda. And I invite you to share a word of encouragement with me today. Come on in from wherever you're joining in. Just come on in and take a moment to calm your heart, your mind, slow it down. And just be in the presence of the Lord. Let's invite him into our midst. Heavenly Father, as we gather today to share a word of encouragement, we ask you to join us and give us a teachable heart. Open our heart to receive your message today. Let the Holy Spirit fill us wherever we're at. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I never like to start without saying what I am grateful for because a grateful heart is indeed a joyful heart. Now, I am grateful because today is Friday, not because it's the last day of the work week, but because on Fridays I get to do corporate prayer with a, um, I, you know, quite a few friends. And so we always gather together and we pull together all our petitions and pray. It could be for our nations, our neighborhood, our cities. Uh, it could be health issues, all kinds of things that we bring forth to the Lord to pray about. And so it's just wonderful to do that as a group. And so it's a great way to start today if you don't already do that for yourself. But on Fridays, we do it as a family, a faith family. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful way to start my day. So I'm so grateful for that. And today I asked the Lord to, before I started to calm my heart, I was a bit, um, since this morning, my phone hasn't worked and it still doesn't work. And I have been on hold maybe an hour at a time, maybe even up to two hours, and I'm up to about three hours trying to get it solved. And so I was starting to get a little bit irritated, but I am going to not let that um, get the better of me. I'm going to let the Lord guide me through getting this situation under control. Today's um, devotional comes to us from Jesus Always. It says, spend your time in the present, like right now. For your hearing, let me teach you how to spend more of your time in the present. The future, as most people conceptualize it, does not really exist. When you gaze into your tomorrows making predictions, you are simply exercising your imagination. I alone have access to what is not yet because I am not limited by time. As you go step by step through each day, I unfurl the future before you. However, while you're moving forward through time, you never set foot on anything but the present moment. Recognize the futility of gazing into yet, uh, gazing into yet to come times can set you free to live more fully in the present. Becoming free is a demanding process because your mind is accustomed to wandering into the future at will. I know I do that. I'm guilty of it. When you find yourself caught up in such thoughts, recognize that you are roaming in a fantasy land. Awakening yourself to, to, its, to its truth helps you return to the present where I eagerly await you ready to unfold you in my unfailing love. So today we this is a reflection a reflection of Revelation 1 and 8. Revelation 1 and 8. Let me turn to my Bible, put my book down, go to my Bible, and Revelation 1 and 8. And this is a vision of man, it says. Oops. I'm on the wrong page as yesterday. Give me one moment here. Okay, here we are. For your hearing, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord. I am the one who is always with you and who is still to come, the Almighty One. So the Alpha and the Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. It also refers to the Lord because God himself is the beginning and the end. God the Father is the eternal Lord, and he's a ruler of the past, the present, and the future. Without him, we have absolutely no, uh, no, we have, there. without him, we have nothing 
um, that is eternal. So we don't walk with the Lord. We have we don't have eternity. Uh, we have nothing that can change our lives in the right direction. We have nothing that can save us from sin. If we don't have the Lord, then we don't have the gift of salvation. Is the Lord your reason for living? I know for me it is. I don't always get it right. And I don't think we're expected to. But I'm telling you, the Lord is my reason for living. He is the Alpha and the Omega of my life. Is he the Alpha and the Omega of your life? Honor the one who is the beginning and the end. The existence. He's the one that exists uh, of all existence, wisdom, and knowledge. So do you acknowledge your uh, Lord Jesus Christ as the Alpha and the Omega? And if you don't, you may be uh, not receiving him as your savior. And so with that note, I offer you the opportunity to make Jesus your Lord and savior. I like to do that before I end each and every one of my broadcasts. I always say there is absolutely nothing that you have done that the Lord cannot forgive you for. Absolutely nothing. We're all sinners. None of us are perfect. We all work hard to be saints, meaning we're always working to correct ourselves immediately when we find that we've done something, we want to turn away from that. We want to ask for forgiveness. Repent. Repent. Ask the Lord to forgive us. Tell him we've sinned and ask him for forgiveness and repent. So today, as always, I offer you the opportunity to receive the Lord as your Savior. And all you have to do is repeat after me. Oh, gracious God, I am a sinner. Please forgive me for my sins. I believe Jesus died for me, and by his blood I am forgiven. You remember my sins no more. I ask you, Jesus, to live inside of me. Give me a new heart. Take over my life. I make you my Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you if you prayed that prayer with me. And if you're not sure what to do, as a new believer, I invite you to leave me a comment down below or direct message me. I want to remind you that Jesus walks with you and he loves you. All you have to do is acknowledge him. Be blessed and have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.